Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to look at a Corsair air cooler. Now they had a, a try at this once before and it didn't do particularly well. Uh, I, the details uh, evade me right now, but we'll park that uh, because in reality, something quite strange has happened over the last year. There always used to be the Noctua NHD15, which we all held as like the hallowed air cooler that everybody else wanted to try and beat. Well, in the last 12 months, pretty much everyone has, uh, to the point where I think that's why the NHD15 replacement is being delayed now, because I think if Noctua want to come back with an all new cooler, they kind of need it to come and trounce the opposition. Uh, so uh, as you'll see in the graphs in a bit, if you have a look, the NHD15 is in all of the graphs, but we're going to be basing it around these four today. And I would say that these are the four big hitters, including this one, or three big hitters that the Corsair needs to compete with. We've got the Deep Call Assassin 4. Uh, it's the one where the uh, other fan is kind of on the back and sits around the back here for RAM uh, clearance. Um, very, very pretty cooler as well. Then we've got the Master Air MA824 Stealth. Classic looking cooler. You can take it apart and like mod the top and stuff like that, uh, but it has some really funky composite heat pipes. And this is kind of like the really technologically uh, advanced one in the way that they've uh, gone about it. And then you've got the Dark Rock Elite. Uh, now there is uh, the um, five as well. I'm looking for the box so that I can show you, but this is the, this is the better one. It's 10 pound more than the other one, but this is the one that I really think that you should buy and it does perform a fair bit better as well. Now, all of these beat the NHD15. Um, you can do it at different fan RPMs, low, high, but this is kind of the stack. And that's why I think the NHD, sorry, the A115 needs to absolutely straight away come in and mix with these. Otherwise, I don't see the point. The Corsair cooler is going to come in at a hundred pounds. Now, the, that kind of matches these two, but the Assassin is only 80. So it's already kind of on the back foot uh, when it comes to that, because when you break it down, that's 20% more expensive than that one, which as you'll see in the graphs, does perform quite well, but it's not over till the fat lady screams or the CPU screams or whatever. Anyway, two 140 millimeter fans on this, um, it's got 165 millimeter cap on the top, uh, give or take, but they, they have gone about their fan mount in quite an interesting way. In that, I have disconnected it, and obviously you would need to take these brackets off and fit them around the other side of the fan, but just for a quick ease to show you how simple it can be, you can literally just slide the fans on and off. Uh, so you could effectively have three fans on this if you wanted and you wanted to uh, buy another one from Corsair. Now the heatsink itself, as you can see, is double tower. 240 millimeter fans. Uh, they, it comes with six, six, six mil heat pipes and a relatively easy uh, mounting mechanism as well. I had no problems with it, didn't give me any headaches, and you didn't need an engineering degree to be able to uh, fit it. I do like the really subtle Corsair embellishment here, but when comparing the aesthetics to the other three, I think that they could have made a little bit more effort into making it slightly prettier. You can see that with the uh, dark rock, you get a nice uh, base around the fans, you get a very nice top on it. The Cooler Master, you, they cover it up as well. And in reality, the Assassin is completely enclosed, completely aesthetically pleasing. And it does make me think that the, uh, in that regard and that regard alone, it does make the A115 feel a little bit more dated. Now, performance wise, 
we're going to start at max and normally and i genuinely do mean this normally this would set off alarm bells for me when we bring up the graph you can see that the uh, corsair kind of hits in the middle look for the green for the corsair you can see that we've got be quiet cooler master and deep call cool all marked out as well the deep call cool absolutely smashes this test with its 1700 rpm uh, top end speed now a lot of people say about noise levels with this but i'm not being funny uh to try and test it uh we always end up with background noise it's not something that we can accurately do it's normally uh the sort of thing that aris would end up doing in his lab with his chamber he's definitely the guy for overall noise levels um i will say though that the corsair was very um uh it, Corsair have a, had a habit years ago of being crazy, crazy loud because they just threw all of the RPMs at it. This is much more balanced. You're not going to run your CPU cooler at 100% all the time. It shouldn't be running at 100% gaming. But if you are got an overclock rig or you've not done an undervolt and you are running a hard benchmark or video encoding or something like that with an air cooler with something like a an i7 or an i9 you would expect the uh, fans to ramp up it's just something that you know those of us out there are just going to go oh yeah okay we expect that um, but equally we will need to talk about the lower end performance as well now a thousand rpm things do change a fair bit because this is the strong point of the be quiet 1000 rpm seem to be the like the hallowed rpm for that cooler in that it just pretty much killed everyone else but randomly it meant that the a115 actually pulled into second place cooler master was last and uh the deep call was a, a couple of degrees behind the uh be quiet but weirdly and i do mean this sincerely weirdly 600 rpm test now this is we, we literally load the cpu up um with occt and do a 30 minute linpack burning mode and we test it with the heatsink at 600 rpm you would not have your system at home running 100 percent with a 600 rpm fan you're probably going to end up sitting somewhere between 800 and 1200 rpm where these kind of ones are at their strong point but very low rpm the efficiency of the a115 actually shone through and it kind of makes you uh, realize that then at that point the heat sink itself is the stronger point in with this cooler because with the deep cool for example it needed loads of rpms going absolutely crazy for it to win with Corsair for it to win out against all the other ones, pretty much turn the fans almost off. And then that little bit of airflow blowing over the top, it's obviously got some good static pressure on those fans, but the low RPM performance was where it shone through. Um, I would actually go as far as to say, now I wouldn't want to put this on top of a 14900K, even with an undervolt or a 13900K for that matter. I think a 13 or a 14 700k would be a big ask i'd still absolutely want an undervolt on it though and i know loads of people are going to say about the undervolt on guide but it's there just bear with me um but this i would see as being a very very healthy cooler for an i5 maybe an under i7 with a strong undervolt on it but critically i would say this would be the sort of cooler i would suggest for someone if they wanted to build something very quiet because you can keep those rpms incredibly low and then it win out and weirdly that is why i'm going to give it the oc3d silence award i don't think the high end pushing the rpm fan performance is particularly strong uh, I think, you know, maybe fan choices and extra fan might help with that. But once you go drop below a thousand RPM and you're at that point where you want strong cooling performance, but with minimal noise and that is from minimal fan RPMs, this one is the strongest one of the batch. 
but that's the only place in reality that it is the strongest one of the batch but i do think it does go to show us that air coolers have come an awfully long way in 12 months and when i first saw a corsair air cooler uh sort of email didn't really inspire me with much confidence and i genuinely didn't hold out much hope but for a certain use case this could be a very good buy it's just going to it's just going to be down to you guys at home to decide do you want a bland looking air cooler or are you just building something and you just want to be quiet but you know it's still going to perform very very well